and welcome to this week's album home. It's a week later than normal, uh, partly because I've been rather busy and partly because I didn't really have enough other than a little bit on the um, hotel and that not very uh, far advanced. But as you'll see in uh, this edition, the hotel is coming on at great uh, pace and I've got on quite well with it. It does focus a lot on the hotel, but actually things happening on it rather than me talking about things happening on it. Um, you may just have caught a glimpse there of my uh, uh, 4F uh, going around pulling a rake of uh, wagons, uh, which were very kindly sent to me by Robert Thompson, who got in touch with me a, a little while ago about some wagons that he, did, he didn't uh, have any need for, and he's very kindly sent them on to me. So there is a running session in the middle of all the talk about the hotel, uh, having a bit of a closer look at what is uh, a goods uh, running session, um, with only goods trains running on the layout. So let's get on with, the, uh, with this edition and I'll talk to you again just before the end. Well, it's time to bring you up to date with where I've got to with the hotel. Uh, and I think I've made quite a bit of progress since the last video, uh, which I'll now talk you through before I go on and start uh, doing some uh, assembly work. And hopefully that will be completed before uh, this video goes up. Uh, you'll recall in the last video uh, I had completed the front and painted the front and put every, all of this on. And as I um, was working and looking at the video when it went up, uh, a thought occurred to me about whether the pane of glass at the front, which, which was a single pane of glass, uh, actually was achievable or possible in the 1930s. And as I was having this thought, uh, Mike Sanderson uh, commented, very gently asking just that question. Um, would it have been possible either to produce a pane of glass of such size, which would be substantial, uh, even if it was, they had the means to be able to erect it without um, it smashing to smithereens. It, it just reinforced a thought that was in my mind, but Mike was quite right to raise it, that you know it created, it looked lovely, but was it actually a practical thing to do? And at the time that he'd emailed me, <clears throat> or rather commented on the video, I had decided to put these two cross members which run at the floor level for the top and middle floors um, so as to break the pane into three panes. But having received his comment, I then started thinking really even those panes would be rather big. So I decided, uh, following his comment, to at the back put in these struts. Now you can't see these struts, you, you can't see them from the side. Um, at all, but what that means is that what the, what looks like from the front three large panes of glass is actually nine panes of glass of a size which I think they would be able to handle. I'm quite sure, just roughly from the dimensions, that these are not dissimilar to the sorts of things those of you that have been to Kew, for example, in the in the glass houses at Kew, or that were used uh, for the Crystal Palace from all the images that I've seen of it that they would have been able to find glass of this shape and size and be able to um, support it by this kind of structure. So it just shows, as I always say, the value of people giving me comments. Um, it's all very helpful. If I hadn't have thought of it for myself, well, that's not unkind. I was, I was wondering when Mike's comment came in, it just made me realize uh, that it, it, it looked very nice, but it was wholly impracticable as a, as a thing in real life. So, uh, having done that, I had by the last time put on the side pieces but not yet painted them. They've now been painted. Uh, and what I wanted then to do was to think about fixing this onto the main body of the hotel. Now you'll recall in the last video, I said that I thought I would put all the lights and things in uh, before uh, and then paint it. Um, in fact, I've decided on a wholly different order of things when you come up against the practicalities of manipulating the hotel once all the lights are in, because all the wires will come out the bottom of the hotel building and it will make it very difficult to make it stand up on anything or lay it down when I'm trying to work on it. So if I move that to one side for the moment, I give you the Art Deco Hotel in all its painted glory. Um, it's fascinating. I've been looking at this for two or three days. It's been dry for at least that. And in the process of videoing, I can see one place where I didn't, where the second coat hasn't reached. So that's going to be painted afterwards to, to be allowed to, to, to dry. So this has now been painted all the way around. 
which also allowed me to paint the two I-beams that I said I was going to be using um, and to insert this piece of card, which does indeed um, run up and down as I wanted it to do, uh, to provide me with an, with an easy way of getting access uh, to do repairs in the event that I need to to lights and things. All the internal, if I take this out for the moment, uh, you'll see that that's now been painted with the black paint all around. Uh, some windows have been completely blacked out so that they, uh, when the lights are on, we don't get light out of every single window. Um, the next thing internally will be to put in the diffusing film uh, that Woodland Scenics provide as part of the light plug system, um, which uh, is a thing that's avoiding me having to build interiors here because the size and scale of this, um, I think it would have made it too difficult. And also, to be blunt, N-gauge furniture, there isn't much of it about, and the time and effort to create it um, for the value you would get from looking through some of these windows, it just isn't worth the candle. So I, I'm, I'm not going to, as, as you will know from early videos, do too much by way of, of that, other than this, these areas here, which will all be lit. Uh, the next piece of work that I wanted to do was to put the front on. And you'll recall that I wanted to put here uh, a kind of, within the porch, a doorway which provides the access to the uh, revolving door. Uh, and I've created this um, using uh, just card, it's just pieces of card to create the form, um, painted on the top because you may be able to see the top of this looking down through the top of the um, window because this comes up pretty much to the floor height. The brickwork or tiling, depending what you want to call it, that's on the front there is uh, produced in Excel, my favourite uh, way of producing very cheap brickwork. I, if I move this back, here you can see uh, just, just a piece of A4 paper. Um, that's all produced in Excel. Uh, I did a video some time ago, um, which the access to which is only, I think, through uh, a link. So I will put a link on the video screen now uh, and in the comment below uh, for you to go and see how I use Excel. It's very straightforward. It's a bit laborious, but it's very straightforward. Um, and it is very useful for producing brick patterns. Um, but I originally de uh, developed it to be able to do tiles for the inside of the fire station. Um, so that now sits on here. And then the front fits over the top. There we go. Let's drop down a little. But you get the idea. You can see that it, it just creates uh, a funnel, essentially, into the revolving door. Um, the back piece, as you will see, I put some three uh, millimeter square strip styrene to make sure this is really rigid because it is potentially going to be lifted in and out. It's not stuck in, and I don't want the card warping over time um, by reason of the fact that it's not fixed to anything. Uh, I have, which you may also be able to see if I bring them in, the holes are drilled for to take the wires for the lights. And so if I turn this, oops, turn this back around again, um, the doors are as I said I would do, which is these, this is the card that was cut out to create the door shape. I've used felt pen, uh, in de well, an indelible marker to color them black and then fitted them back in to give that absolute flush look um, that the doors are, are there. They, they actually swing open. But the thing about these doors is that with, all, with, with the exception of one, which may get a frame around it, I'll, I'll have a look once it's completely finished. But with the exception of one, once the fire escape goes in front, you don't actually see the doors very much. Um, I, they will be lit. So, and it's going to be only viewable uh, from around the back. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'll see whether I put a frame around the top of that door. These doors will have frames put around them and I should be building those shortly. Um, or rather, I will build those when I do all the external decoration because it is my intention um, to have, certainly around the front, maybe not the back, 
uh, a band going along here which is painted dark green. For the front I'm going to be using an L-shaped um, piece uh, of um, strip styrene uh, to provide a ledge through which the downpipes will come. So that will be on the front of the building. Uh, on the back I think the downpipes may just come straight down the building because again the back of buildings tend not to be heavily decorated uh, and this is going to be a fairly functional uh, back. Um, there's no need for external pipes from um, baths and sinks and all of that sort of stuff because as you'll recall this is all the pipes and, and sewage and all the rest of it is dealt with centrally from each of the rooms uh, so that we don't need extensive pipe work on the back. So having completed that much which is taking me quite a long way forward um, I have started in fact I have completed the laborious process of painting all my windows which if I bring them in here you can see them all all now dry. So the next thing for me to do is to get all the windows on the building to get the porch attached to the building and uh, also to paint and get attached the exterior decoration including um, corner pieces which again will be L-shaped um, strip styrene acting essentially as, a, as coins but also part of the external decoration in the darker green. Well, here you can see the hotel. I've now managed to uh, put all the exterior windows on. I've put on the um, corner pieces which uh, are acting effectively like uh, coin coins would do uh, on a brick built building but also provide a bit of exterior decoration. Uh, the windows are on all the way around now. Um, so this is beginning to come together. I've uh, put the door surrounds on. This uh, I'm leaving as I said before. Um, I don't think I'm going to put a, a door surround there but again I'll see. The beauty of this piece of course is that it comes out. So if I change my mind until I stick the um, fire escape into place uh, I don't think that causes a problem. So if I put the fire escape in place um, and I'd welcome views on the fire escape. Um, I was always intending to have that as, as black I uh, can't remember who now but somebody said a suggestion about possibly it being a form of grey so at the moment it has nothing but primer on it. So I'd be interested in your views on whether it should go black or whether I should try and see if I can find a kind of uh, lighter grey because I don't think it'd be quite as dark as that. Um, I, I, my inclination is, is, to, is to have it all black because many of the ones that I saw in pictures are but I'd be interested in your views on that. Uh, in the comments below. Um, one of the things that I haven't done is put the lighting in. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to start fitting the uh, light um, diffusing window film uh, into the building which is the thing that obviously stops you being able to see that it's just an empty shell. And I'm going to be using uh, the the just the uh, Woodland Scenic Just Plug Light Diffusing Window Film. This is the box. Ta -da. And I'm going to use both the diffusing film and the tint. Um, and if you give me a moment just to um, reposition things, 
I'll be able to demonstrate uh, why I'm using both. So I'll be back in just a moment. OK, well, I've moved everything around. Um, what I just want to demonstrate for you uh, quick, fairly quickly is the light diffusing window film, both the uh, diffuser itself and also the tint. Uh, the film comes in uh, two sections um, that's broadly twice as high as this piece and then about a yard long, 36 inches. Um, and you get one sheet of this at a yard long and one sheet of this at a yard long. Uh, and the reason that I'm going to use both is you'll see that I've got in here one of the just plug lights. This is one of the lamps that will actually sit on the wall here to give light to this half of the building. Uh, and at the moment, of course, if I put my finger here, you can probably see my finger moving around because you can see right through into the building. So I was always going to be using the diffusing film. And if I put this piece in here, uh, plainly that now is uh, you can't see through because that's opaque. But if I turn the light off, let's turn the light off. What you will see is that this is all very white, except for one, which is black, because that's the window that I don't want light to come through when the lights go on to suggest that some of the rooms are unoccupied. If, however, I add the diffusing film, if I can get, there we go, on top as like this, um, and put that in, what we now have are a whole series of black windows. So, the, so that we're, um, it's only when the light comes back on, let me just turn this up, there we go. So the light comes back on, uh, that's got, <laughs> that's fallen over, thank you very much. I'll hold that. The light comes back on and now we have the lights coming out except for the one window which I wanted black. But when the, when the light goes away, they all go to black. Uh, so the thing I've got to do now is to fit the diffusing film. In the kit, you get lots of very small um, little stickery things, um, which you use both to stick the two bits of film together and then to affix the film inside the model. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do all of that. Uh, and then I need to start work on the roof. I've already started work on that, but that will all be in uh, the next video. Uh, once I've completed the roof, uh, and I'm pretty close to working out how to do the roof, it will be time to put the lights in because that will be about the last thing that needs to be done. So the model has come on in leaps and bounds. Um, most of the construction, I think, other than the roof, is now complete. But we'll see if I end up eating my words um, when we come back in the next video in a few weeks' time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, edition of Elven Home uh, and the work that's been going on in the hotel. I think I'm in the home straight now, which is good to see. Uh, and if I get time in the next couple of weeks, we should hopefully get to see the hotel finished and on the layout. Um, thanks again to Robert Thompson for the coaches, uh, for the wagons. I mean, I, they re are, really are a nice addition to the, to the layout. And if you've liked the video, please do give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, well, please do subscribe. I'm grateful to all the new subscribers that have come on since the last video. I'm over 1,600 subscribers now, and which is really quite amazing. Uh, and I'm really grateful for all those that have subscribed and those who regularly come back to watch. If you've got any comments, please, please do leave them in the, in the comments section. I always try and respond to them. Um, one tip, however, uh, if you put a link in a comment, uh, YouTube quarantines it, but it doesn't tell me it's quarantined it. And it's only when I remember to go and look in the ones held for review uh, that I sometimes find it. So if you haven't had a response and you have put a link in the comment, that may be the reason why. But I do try and check those quite regularly. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers that have come on since the last one. As I said, I think I'm over 1600, uh, which is marvellous. Grateful to have you all along. And anyone who hasn't yet subscribed, in case I haven't said it already, please do subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading. So I hope to do another video in about two weeks' time, but it might be three. I shall judge the frequency um, to work it right for the upcoming Christmas break when we're away and one thing or another. Uh, so until I speak to you again in about two weeks' time, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.